Good morning Year 5 and welcome to Tuesday's English lesson. Uh, today we're going to be reading for understanding and interpretation. So we're going to be answering some questions in detail about the text. Hopefully you have already listened to chapter 14. Uh, but if not, then you're going to need to stop the video right now and go and read chapter 14, The Waterman's Arms, OK, which is in the folder. And once you've done that reading, then you're going to be answering some questions which are also in the folder. There are three levels of questions. OK, you should choose the one that's appropriate for you. The slightly easier ones are text retrieval questions. So these are fairly straightforward text extractions. So you need to find the information in the text and then answer the questions in a full sentence. The next level of challenge, which is the one that I think most of you will be ready for, is to do some reading between the lines, some inference skill practice. So these questions make you think about the text you're reading. So the answer isn't always 100% obvious. There are clues in the text which you should be able to pull out to answer the questions. OK, and if you are ready for a really good challenge, these are much harder questions uh, where they ask you to explain the language and support your opinions. And if you have a go at these, OK, well done. That's super impressive. So these questions ask you to explain things or support an opinion that you have. So, for example, here it asks about the atmosphere on the river in the first three lines of the chapter. So you'll need to read the first three lines of the chapter carefully and think about what it's telling you and which of the words in those three lines give you the impression or the atmosphere. OK, further down, you're asked for your opinion. So what do you think have been the worst things for Jim so far? And what do you think are the best things for Jim so far? And you need to explain why you think that. OK, so that's um, very important that you add that part onto your answer. Those answers as well need to be answered in sentences and in full. And you need sure, make, to make sure that you've made your point and you support your answers with evidence from the text explaining what you mean. So this is what we call our P paragraph, our point, evidence and explanation. We've done many examples of this in class, so I'm sure you'll be really good at it. So, for example, a question could be when Nick offers to buy Jim stew, Jim has a mixture of feelings. Explain what these are and why Jim feels this way. So Jim has a mixture of feelings. So I need to cover both or the several feelings that are there. I need to explain what they are and why he feels this way. So I'm going to start when Nick offers to buy Jim stew. Jim is so tired after his hard day's work clearing the coal from the hold. He feels he would rather go to sleep. So here I've used this from the text, my evidence. We know that he's really tired after his hard day's work clearing the coal because it tells us that in the text. And I've explained then he feels he would rather go to sleep. However, so this is giving the other point of view, he feels that Nick is offering him the stew as a kind of compliment and that it's a reward for his hard work. And it actually uses the word compliment in the text. Also, as he's scared of Nick, so I'm adding my opinion to try and explain it, he feels he cannot turn this invitation down without making Nick angry, so he has to go and have stew. So I've made my point, I've added some information about the text, and then I've explained it. And that's what you'll need to do for most of those answers. And then finally, when you have finished, you need to stop and you need to listen and read chapters 15 to 16 of Street Child in the folder before tomorrow's lesson. Good luck, everybody. We look forward to seeing how you get on.